I'm Cy Wagner. I'm from northern Arizona. Um, from a place called Bird Springs. It's where my father's from. And my mother's from the uh, Shanto area, Cal Springs. The reservation is the size of West Virginia, known as Navajo. The na in our language. In our workshops, direct action or a call for help or um, support or just just to just to get a clear message across, you know, some some form of art that's is used. We work with this um, a partner we, of collectives, and there are there are, I guess I guess there are different art forms, but we largely take care of like the the arts in general, uh, as far as like visual arts. But there's also the art of farming and growing, and there's a, there's a person who uh, coordinates that, does like uh, uh, urban gardening, and then there's another person who also does that same thing in their community, but also focus uh, their skills on natural building too. Um, talking about these different skills and then painting them and drawing them and visually displaying them and talking about them is one thing, but then there's another thing to also live it too. So I think we actually apply it to our lives um, more so in these past few years because it, it, it makes sense. And, and it's also uh, uh, a f part of the philosophy of our people too, to, to walk that, to you know, build, your, build your home efficiently. And if you're gonna talk about home, you, know, you should have that relationship with it. And so uh, I think also we took our collective um, and really strictly been uh, regional too. We try to be regional. We try to focus on our community and, 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 and uh, people that are tangible, everyday people that we interact with. You know, those are the people we work with. Um, we're always called to like go, we, like we even asked, we were asked to go paint in Germany. Um, we were asked to go to Palestine. We were asked to go to these like different parts of the world, um, exotic, non-exotic. But I, I think eventually we will, you know, but Right now, you know, our people, our, our family, our friends, the people around us are very important right now. And, and I, think, I think it's really, you know, to build a, a strong base and connect with them and learn through them. And I think those, those ideas are really uh, passed around and, and shared. And I think that's where the dialogue comes up as far as, like, uh, energy goes and where, what, what's at stake, you know, whose land is going to be um, utilized next or whose water is going to be utilized next because it is scarce you know the conditions out in where we live are pretty harsh and if you know you're it's 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 pretty much like life or death you know like you got to really take care of yourself you got to take care of your people you got to take care of your family and so uh, um, some people still live with the seasons and, and plant and plant their food throughout the year and and you know those times are hard so it takes a community to support one another. And I think it's, that's where it's, the issues have always been and, and for us. I'm a um, nonviolent direct action coordinator, or trainer. I uh, train, I've been, I've been trained through Ruckus, the Ruckus Society. I've, been, uh, I've done work with Rainforest Action Network, Greenpeace, um, Students for Free Tibet, all these different movements around environmental issues and human rights. Um, so we've been really supporting one another's communities and cause around nonviolent direct action. Um, it's not the only form of change, but it's definitely it's a powerful tool that you can use amongst an entire movement. And it's working, you know. It's, it's got our, our leaders' attention. It's got our own people's attention. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I do anything to support other people, and I feel like um, I feel like uh, a lot of uh, indigenous people have been excluded, and as far as like who's affected, and large um, mainstream organizations have really been going out there and using these calls. You know, the nation has realized this "clean coal is a lie" campaign, and realized that coal is an issue now, and. Like that's that's I feel like that's a that's a T-shirt that's a fashion that's a it's a bandwagon you know but you know that's there's people that have been living with that from the very beginning since coal has been affecting whether it's the 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 mountains in the eastern eastern coast of the United States you know the the 
Appalachia, or if it's Black Mesa, you know, it's it's been it's been it's been somebody who's greedy and who's been wanting money, you know, who's been digging up the the, the earth, whether it's the uranium or, or different minerals, you know, people have been affected in those communities, and their stories are untold. And why aren't we training those people, or why aren't we supporting those people? And there was a few people that thought that, you know, the same thing, and that's, that's where I end up training, becoming the trainer there. So I also teach, teach uh, technical actions and um, banner deployment. Um, and I recently did an action with, uh, it was a campaign to get Obama's attention for the G8 meeting in December. And uh, we dropped the banner at Mount Rushmore. Um, and it was, uh, the message was, um, we honor leaders, the country, the nation honors leaders, not politicians. And the issue was around global warming and that science really needs to be heard, not politics. Um, the facts are there and that climate change is, 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 is a big issue right now and we need to make those changes within this year and it's going to that great links where people are uh, putting themselves and jeopardizing their their um, I guess their their freedom <laughs> civil disobedience you know if it's if it's going if it's going to take going to jail to get someone's attention you know some people are down to do it there's an imbalance all the way to to our, our leaders our recognized leader our voted leaders in our tribe, um, they money's been money's been the money's been the main motivation. You know, um, we're not gonna they're not gonna protect our people. They're not gonna. I feel like there's there's gonna be no safety for the people as long as there's profit in it. And that's what it's come down to. You know, playing by those rules to to get their attention. That um, some of those mining. Uh, conditions leave scars but then leave this entire cycle it doesn't just stop from digging up the earth and leaving it bare and planting you know there's this cycle of like coal for an example you take it out of the earth you, you process it you know it doesn't just come out of the earth into the plant you know there's there's oil and gas that's used to, to, to mine. There's water, there's tons and tons, millions of tons of water that you, is being used to process it. And so um, wells are, are depleting, the water table's lowering, and then springs are drying up, and um, it, it's, it's affecting our people. And, and coal, and then, and then, you know, that's before it's even burned, you know, before it's even processed to, to create this energy to, to you know, turn on the, the porch light or you know, turn on the, the TV to power these different necessities that, that we call. Um, you know, then, then, and then it gets into the air when it's being burned. Where does that go? It just doesn't disappear. It goes into, but if it doesn't make it to your lungs, then it probably goes into some plant or animal, which gets cycled back into the ground. and. You know, it's it's e it, you're you're eating that, and you know your water. So it's like it doesn't go away. You know, it's, it goes on. It's hard to ignore. You know, it's it's uh, it's everywhere. It's it's when you it's 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 in your face when you travel across the land. You know, it comes up in conversation. Um, it's in the news. It's on the radio. It's in your car. It's in the air. It's you know. It's it's in plain sight too. It's built a um, huge dependence on it, you know. From that comes a job, a steady income, nice cars, nice homes, you know, be able to afford to do whatever you want. And, and forgetting their relationship to the very earth they dig in, you know, to get these resources. Um, to, to, to not listen to their own prayers you know that 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 is a connection with the earth, and you know eventually, and it and it, and it, and it affects and kills people. And and then with from that 
is hardship, heartache, um, hard times for a lot of people too. So, that, you know, all because of money and all because of so I, so I can make my truck payments, you know, or, or be able to afford, you know, the luxuries. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really, it's, like I said, it's a distraction. It's really, I know a lot of people that work for, I think everybody does, <laughs> the mind, relative of some, some, somebody it was always, I, I was asked to even take a scholarship to get trained at a power plant and, and work for them, and, you know, but that wasn't for me, it was an, Refused, refused to do that. For most indigenous people, they're, they're really well known for their adaptivity, you know. I think, I feel like we've adapted the wrong way. You know, we should have been adapting to living in those conditions, um, you know, catching water, you know, rather than letting it go into the earth, um, planting irrigations, uh, um, Having some of some kind of a commute system within within the reservation, you know, there's like the, there's a, there's a coal power plant up north that that there's this train that goes in a big old circle from power plant to mine to power plant to mine to power plant, in this big circle. Like these corporations came here and and built these railroads, built these machines, brought this business here, and we've been, we've been paying their light bills <laughs> with, with, with our lives. But they didn't even care to even put like a, like a, like, how are we going to transport some of these, can we transport people, or besides just coal, you know? They didn't even think about the people. And that just shows you like how selfish they are. You know, this train goes in this big circle. We could be throwing people on there, and, and people could travel as they please throughout the reservation. But no, it's just coal. And there's like maybe, I don't know, two or three people that operate that train that goes in a big old circle. And it's not smart thinking, you know? Um, recently, they were, they were using water to, to, to slurry. They like made this slurry line 300 miles out into another state to power this power plant. It's like it's just selfish, careless ways of how they use resources. People need to be included in, the, in those decisions. You know, there's no, no, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have these people, our own leaders have these uh, closed doors decision making sessions that have been going on. And so that has affected our own people. The United States itself is really um, pushing a, a greener economy, is what I think is what they're calling it. Uh, greener jobs, um, which is just a word. I feel like uh, I really, really hope they're really serious about it. You know, and as far as getting um, some of these alternative, uh, sustainable, renewable energy, I guess you, you could call it. And um, well, the reservation has been using a lot of uh, wind power from the very beginning because there's a lot of wells, there's a lot of uh, windmills that have been pumping water long before there was electricity lines in the area, you know. So that's, that's evidence right there that you have wind power, that it works, you know. And the technology right now is just, we, we're, we're advanced, you know. We're, 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 we're smart, we should utilize them. It may be costly, but it's also, you know, it's, coal is costly in many ways, you know. Not, not just in dollars, but in lives too, and in health, and I think I think uh, uh, some people are smart. There are certain communities that have really stepped it up, you know. Um, wind power generating stations that are, that are being planned, um, solar. Uh, solar has been introduced to the community. It's just not affordable. Just for some reason, well, for the obvious reason, it's not affordable. And um, I, think, I think we really, people should really consider, you know, taking that into their own hands and, and think about being off the grid, you know. What is that like? You know, it brought us, we, we've lived off the grid, that's how we're here. You know, it's possible. So I think, I think it's just re-educating, again, get away from the distractions out there and, and start, start making this future for, our, for our, not only ourselves, but our, the people to come, you know. There's a lot of people doing everything in their own power to, to resist and also educate and 
uh, inform people of the changes that are, that are harming our people and live in those communities. But then there's also, I guess, people like me that go out of the community, out of the reservation, um, to learn from others and see what other people are doing and always bring that back, always come back. Because uh, like, I, would, I would like to go home. I would love to just go home. But to have that idea, to have that notion in the back of my mind that, that, that you know, we're doing this to our earth and, then, um, and we're feeding this, this beast that's not going to quit until, until the resources are completely gone. And, and, and that's a real, 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 it's a reality for us. We're headed in that direction. And I can't just go home and, and ignore all that and live at home, you know. It's, it's, it's affected our people. It's, it's, um, it's relocated people. It's, took, it, it's taken people out of their roots. I've seen what it's done to people. I've seen the road that, that people have gone to, to try to go back because a lot of those decisions that have been made to leave um, and their lands being taken by these, these, these companies and they can't move back there because they sold out. They gave in, they signed it over or they moved. I think, I think, I think as people, as these people, they, they, they didn't know, they didn't, they didn't think they were ready. They, didn't, they weren't ready for that change. And now, you know, they're, I see them, I see them struggling in, in off the reservation. Um, and I always hear it in everybody's voice, everybody's conversation. It's like, we talk about those times as long time ago. We talk about that lifestyle of living off the land and, and feeding ourselves, utilizing the earth. Uh, we're, we're, we were given, we were blessed to be given this land back to us by this country that imprisoned us. They could have done anything with us. They could have taken us into another state. And, you know, I would have been born and raised there, but we were, we were given the opportunity to come and return back to our homeland. And a lot of tears, a lot of, a lot of uh, heartache went into that. And I think about that, you know. I, I, I feel that. I feel those people's um, hard work. And, and for me to just sell out and turn my back and forget about that, I, just, I can't do that. I can't do that knowing that those people had, had gone through this really hard time. For me to be here, and for me to, to, um, for me to stand here, and uh, you know, that for me to speak my language and hear and teach and learn, you know, they they did that for me. So I'm not I'm not just gonna give in to that. You know, it's it's been a really big part of our life, and 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 you know, we've been driven off course. And that if those people that went through that for us to be here have had seen where we have gone and the decisions that we have made. We, we would probably break their hearts. We would, we would definitely disappoint them, you know. Um, and, and, and we're treating the land as it's useless, as, it, as, it's, as it's, we're taking advantage of it. You know, we're going, I can go as far as saying we're raping the land, you know, that's literally what we're doing. But, you know, and, and I don't know how people live with themselves working in that and then go to a ceremony or go to greet the sun in the morning and give their offerings and their prayers, but knowing that they do, they're doing this to the earth. I don't, I don't know how people do that. I just, you know, I, I, think, I think it's going to take some waking up. And if, that, if that's the rest of my life, I think I'll be, uh, I know I'll be content. I'll li I would live the life I want to live, you know, because that, that's what's important. Um, I was, I was born and raised by my, 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 uh, my dad's mother is the one that taught me a lot. She passed away when I was around 10, but a lot of her knowledge and a lot of her teachings um, 
It's like these little time capsules that get released like later on in life. Like I'm 32 years old now, and that's like 20 years later. They're finally getting released, and under, uh, like this understanding is starting to settle in my mind and, and, and my conscious. It's like that's what she meant. That's what she's talking about. You know? She's not going to be here because you know I need to understand this. So that's I think maybe it takes. It takes uh, uh, more, more time for people to understand that, but I feel like I've understood it, I got it, and that, that's, that's what my, my work is based around, is, is, is some of the, the knowledge that has been passed on from, from my, my, my people, my, my lineage, my, the, one that, the ones that have made me, you know. And I, I think that's, that's my inspiration, it's my purpose.